My attempt at monotone was quiet. You do always start. I just I don't know if you notice this, but every single episode you start uber uber quiet. You come in at oh this it's nice just how, measured. It's tone. just how it goes, dude. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, get, you... I get hype. <laughs> It's and you energy. start you start all professional, like, hey, yeah, we're back, blah, blah, blah. And then by mid-episode, you've just completely lost it with me. And then you're just, you're just, you're just yelling and screaming the whole your, time. Sick of your <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 36 of We Were Gamers. We were. We were. Some weeks I feel like a gamer, not all the time. That's true. <laughs> Welcome back, JJ. You were just in San Francisco this weekend. Yeah, this was a not a great weekend to choose to go to San Francisco. Uh, there was a birthday for a great aunt who has turned 90, which is really old. Uh, yeah, I think I have a, a relative that's 93, but that's probably about it. Yeah, my fiance's great aunt turned 90 uh, and had a nice little party uh, where I got to meet all of these people who I'd never met before. So I have no real in anything to say other than, like I said, hello to all of these people. <laughs> that's what a family function's about, man. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, and it was also raining like cats and dogs the entire time we were there. This is why I assume your planes never made it off the ground. Yeah, both of my flights, both directions were delayed by like at least 20 or 30 minutes on the short side and over an hour on the long side. So yeah, not great. Uh, also that takeoff, uh, on the way home was one of the shiftiest plane takeoffs I've been a part of. I mean, I understand how physics works. So, like, the plane isn't going to fall out of the sky because it's windy and shaking, and like, you know, you get that, but you get that drop feeling, right? Like the roller coaster ride. Yeah, yeah. It's like I can't stop the lady down the row from screaming or like getting scared. You know, like it's not <laughs> not within my power. <laughs> oh man! Well, I didn't do much this weekend other than catch a cold. So I'm going to do my best to plug my nose instead of sniffing this entire time. But I apologize if that's the case. The other reason, uh, you know, we're a little bit late other than my cold is I'm currently inundated in ants, JJ. My whole oh, office, the, worst. the whole the office worst, floor, it's like that scene in Indiana Jones where he says, I hate snakes. And the, the literally the floor is just moving. Oh, man, that's not a good spin that I don't I don't want to hear about this now. <laughs> I think my socks were white when I came in here. That's all I'm saying. That's disgusting. Thanks for implanting that image in my and now everyone who's listening head. I don't think it's very fair for me to keep going and making jokes without introducing our surprise guest for today, Ken Rollo, who's over here biting his tongue, trying not to laugh and let everybody know that he's here. But say hi, Ken. Hi, thanks. <laughs> I'm seriously like, and also my bad, my brain goes like, asps, very dangerous. Like the, the nerd things want to come out and then like also the laughter. So it's. <laughs> well, at least you didn't immediately go to bad dates. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that poor monkey. I know, so sad. R.I.P. monkey. Why did it have to be snakes, man? Yeah. Oh, well, Ken, uh, Ken you're kind of a, a staple in the Friends of Ours podcast scene. Yeah, I, I guest star, or guest host on a lot of different things. I've been on, I think, two to three different podcasts between Geek Say What, Ready Set Geek, Geek KO, Geek Offensive, all geek-related <laughs> ones. Um and I mean, I post Is this on, like its own podcast network? Yes, it's the Geek Say What Network. Yeah, um, they started. They started out as one show, and then collaborated with other friends who had other shows. Like, uh, like Justin's apartment was a podcast, and Super Geek Supreme um, was another one with uh, Justin Ryan Madiaga. And so it's like a lot of different people all came together and said, "Okay, we'll just make a network." And now they're trying to get everything set up for that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And Ken, you know, in his uh, infinite attempt to keep learning asked me how we do our podcast because it's completely different from everything they do over at Geek Say What Network, uh, you know, where they get to sit around a room and commits. Well, that's only a recent thing, though. Like, they, because of a, because, oh, then I, actually, I forgot to mention too, I also do, did some sound and engineering for Wayland Productions, that's the home of the We're Live uh, audio drama. And so since I had access to that, they started using that facility too. So yeah. they used to do just like just the laptop and like one mic, everyone huddles around it, like for warmth. <laughs> <laughs> That's all disgusting. It's by the lantern. I want it to be known that I did actually know that it was a network and I just led that question because the people needed to know. But like, yeah, I didn't yeah. know about that studio though. That's really cool. Yeah. So I, I started listening to a podcast way back when, 
And then I, I, as I started listening more, I, I recognized a couple of names and I realized one of the people who I would pull for subscriptions for the comic shop that I work at was the same name. I'm like, oh, that, that's, it's not a, it's not a John Smith name. It's very specific, Grayson Stone. And so I talked to him and I'm like, oh yeah, we do it right over here. And so I started working with them on their, on that uh, audio drama. So Ken was curious how we do ours because JJ and I are not in the same room. No. And uh, it's an engineering feat. Yeah. <laughs> the magic yeah. of the internet. The magic yeah. of plus, pressing a couple buttons on Skype and knowing how to use Audacity. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. So uh, Ken wanted to come watch, and I said, well, if you're going to come watch, then you got to earn your keep and come on the show. So we're bringing him on because I think, JJ, Ken brings to us, especially in the gamer. I'm, I'm sure if I mentioned the word Star Wars, we could just do that the entire episode. Oh, yeah. We can discuss Rogue One if necessary. <laughs> like, we can go back. To the well Does Ken want to tell me how all, Ken? Sorry, Ken Rollo, uh, noted hater of Reno Jackson, <laughs> want to correct my opinions on Rogue One? Also, no, because you're incorrectable. It just it's you're like Cole of the of that network. It's like no, you know he's wrong. Just let him be wrong. He's not going to change his mind. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just, throw shade. Hold on, hold on. Time out, <laughs> JJ. Sit this one out, JJ. <laughs> I'm going to throw shade on GSW here. <laughs> JJ is not the Cole of any network. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> mic drop, but they're kind of expensive, so. <laughs> yeah, not these mics. We borrow, we're borrowing these. And if you drop my mic. Yeah, it's. Yeah. <laughs> <good morning. laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh, man. No, so we could, you know, we could do the geek thing. But I think we, JJ, as PC gamers slash uh, somewhat handheld console gamers, we're lacking a little bit. And I think J- uh, Ken can fill it in for us. Can you play a lot of Xbox? Yeah, I uh, started out on the Xbox 360 as far as uh, more modern stuff. I mean, of course, I started out back at the, with an Atari, the Nintendo, Super Nintendo. Um, you got cred. You yeah. got cred. Yeah, it goes deep. We know. So, but uh, were you a Se- it was Super Nintendo, so no, not no. Sega Genesis, right? No, no. I, we, when, back when you had to choose houses, I chose the Nintendo house. And then did you sit out the PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast eras? I actually did get a Dreamcast. I was like, because that was like, oh, it's a bold new era. Like, we're going to move over to this. Well, you were, you, you are a big Capcomer too. Yeah. So Sega Capcom was like That's the true, marriage yeah. of the century with the Dreamcast, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I did have a PlayStation and I once, uh, I didn't get a 64. And when I kept getting my butt handed to me in Goldeneye, I'm like, okay, fine. I don't have one. I'm never going to win. So I'm just gonna, I started going over the PlayStation and that's where I started doing all the the Resident Evil and, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter Alpha. Gotcha. And I've pretty much always been console, and my, my only argument is that when I buy an Xbox game, it always works on, on the Xbox. If I buy a PC game, my PC may or may not be able to play it depending on my hardware. Yeah. And that's, that's, it's all a matter of cost to me in, in that degree. We were very um, disconnected, unfortunately, because of having built PCs for gaming. It's, like, impossible sometimes for us to to know what people are and aren't able to play right like yeah I, the question isn't if it's going to run it's if it's going to run well or look really good it's going to run yeah it's just like is it going to be pretty yeah but like when we say we're talking about civ and we'll talk about civ later but when we're, when jj and i are talking about civ it's the biggest news in the world to us but we forget civ that so like rad. yeah well it's <laughs> what else are you going to play it on other than a pc um, actually, I, well, on that note, <laughs> an iPad, I guess. <laughs> well, no, you can play. I think um, Civ is coming to Linux soon. Well, Civ was on Civ Rev was on Xbox 360. Oh, there you go. But that's like an iPad game, though, right? Civ Rev. Yeah, Civ Rev, and actually, Civ Rev Two is also on iPad. And because of your podcast about Civ, I got it on my on my iPhone. Like you guys inspired me because you guys kept talking about it. I'm like, well, that sounds that sounds kind of interesting. I I enjoy some real time strategy. Let me. Did we disappoint you? Is it the worst game you've ever played? No, it's fun. It's it's. I definitely, and I also want to start with Civ Rev because I know Civ can be so in depth. Like you can just like lose hours upon hours into it. I'm like, okay, well, Civ Rev is very much seems like you know the younger brother version. I'm like, oh, this is for your young brother to try out. He can play that. And I I was okay with my training wheels of Civ Rev Two. Does it still make you want to hit that intern button and play like one more time? Because that's the essence of Civ to me. It's like how many. Oh, I just need to do like I just need one more turn. Just one more turn. I can do this thing, and it'll be good. And then it's oh no, okay. Well, now just one more, and like that's the game right there. Yeah. Well, I definitely like I I would win, and I'm like, but I okay. So I won domination victory, but can I keep going? Can I just keep dominating more oh. more nations, and then just or oh, I, yeah. I want to go for my my civil or not civil the social win. I want that victory too. I want to yeah. double down. 
Oh yeah, that was the essence of like Civ Two for me. Was huh, I wiped everybody out? Can I build a city everywhere? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh man. Well, should we should we do Xbox first or do your Civ questions first? Because I, I know you have a bunch of Civ. Whichever questions. one you want to go with. I'm We're already right. talking about Civ. Let's go. All right. So All right. so we inspired him to do Civ. He said he got Civ Rev and he had a bunch of questions. You, we're here for you. Fire away. Well, my okay. Some questions were on Civ Rev. Some were like on how, like, to what degree is there more? But I mean, have you played Civ Rev two to you know compare to the actual Civ? I played Civ Rev one. Civ Rev one. I was curious, like, to what degree? Like, I had, as I was playing, I'm like, okay, so you can combine units, like three three units together, and make an army. But I was trying to combine three armies together to make whatever would do oh, no, that no yeah i found that out the hard way that i'm like i can't combine more and more together like three of the sets and then three of the sets and ex- exponents of three i'll keep going <laughs> and just have just a massive force of horseback and you know <laughs> horseback J- riding. jj explain explain stacks in <laughs> civ 4 okay so in civ 4 uh the way the game used to work you could stack units onto the same tile right so you could have multiple types so you could have a horse unit you have a flyer you could have a an archer you could have a boat you could have like 15 of these things all on top of each other I, was there even a limit i don't even know if there was a i limit. don't think there was a limit so the way you won in that game was you made a stack of all of your units essentially on top of each other <laughs> and then loaded them all into the fastest one so that your thing could like move around at the speed of the tank or whatever uh, and then drove oh. across the map and murdered everyone with your one tile death army. <laughs> you had the one tile roving death ball that, when it hit an ocean, jumped onto one ship, <laughs> and sailed across, <laughs> and murdered another entire continent. There's yeah. 14 <laughs> archers and 73 tanks, and like, you know, a thousand horses from the medieval ages, and you put them all on one little boat. <laughs> so ever since Civ 4, Civ 5, Civ Rev, all these other things, they've always been exploring how to allow you to effectively manage the space on the map, not make you one unit per tile like kind of existed in Civ 5, but also make it harder for you to just conquer your enemies, you know, instantly. Yeah. And I, 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 I learned too, like, okay, so I can do... I, you have multiple stacks and stuff, so it's easier to defend. Like, if they send an army over, it's like, right. okay, they're going to try to take out your, your horsemen, then your tank, and, like, no, you can't, you know, they can't get through all of them, so I'm safe there. But, like, as far as invading armies, like, trying to take, going to take out their places, I have to take the tank over, he attacks separately, and everyone attacks separately. It's like, I have to learn the order in which, okay, he's stronger, so he'll just, you know, take out the first team, and so on and so forth. But yeah. I was trying to do, like, okay, so it's just giant stacks of just... Um, you know, spies and make them one army of spies go and be like, okay, all your buildings are gone now. <laughs> There's also a little bit of rock, paper, scissors going on all the time. Like, if you try to use horses against spear guys, you're going to get destroyed because horses lose to spears, right? Or, like, I forget how, uh, is it tanks are good, or artillery is good against buildings, and infantry is good against... I forget. Anyway, like archers, I think. Uh, and so, like, there's a little bit of, like, a rock, paper, scissors going on there, although there's, like, more than three. I think that's completely lost in the Civ Red version, because uh, just tanks kill everything. <laughs> well, that's still true, though. Like, your tank is still going to murder the dude's horse, even though horses are supposed to be stronger, right? Yeah. But, because you're, like, you know, yeah, it's about relative apart strength. or whatever. You may but, win the rock, paper, scissor, but if you're strength 30 and he's strength 10, you're never going to lose. Yeah. It's exactly. like, you'll take... You'll take eleven damage instead of ten because he won the rock paper scissor. Yeah, and I, I I do know that like archers have have higher defense than attack, so it's like they're really good for defensive positions. And right. Also, if you have a if you have a city with walls, they can shoot out of it, and there are definitely those benefits. But for the most part, I, in Civ Rev Two, there was not like that rock paper scissors feel to it, at least. Just that I can see like okay, they have better defenses, so they're better to hold this position. So does Civ Rev have artillery units? Because that's really how you end up taking cities most of the time. I feel. Um. A I mean, catapult or uh, yeah, cannons. Can, you skip it like it skip. It can skip a square, right, and then has to like set up for a turn. Yeah, it, there are. Yeah, they they move a little bit faster. You could have cannons, and then if you played different, like different nations had different thing, names for cannons and stuff too. Um, but you did yeah. have all that stuff. Yeah, those things are the ones that wreck cities. It's like yeah, you can plink away at them with a tank or whatever, but those kinds of units will just like destroy those cities real quick. That was one of the benefits of killing the roving death ball was that your roving death ball was just 50 tanks and you just kept punching it into the city and then they were like well 
that's just stupid. So they added these units, you know, like these howitzers and things, and they really made them indispensable. So a lot of the time you end up putting your tanks just in front of the howitzer. The howitzer sits there for three turns, pounding the city. And, then you just roll <laughs> and your, your tanks tank are just defending it. so that yeah. you've walled them into their city and they can't leave. Yeah. And then if you can establish cities near them, you can slowly take them over with social... Like, oh, no, oh, that's we've, fun. We've, we've got great, you know, we've got great yeah. schools in our districts. You should totally come over here to our side. <laughs> yep. And they're yep. like, well, we, you know, we like parks. Why don't we join up with them? Did they manage to try and tackle religion with a mobile game? There is religion in it. I, but I didn't, I never really fully explored that. It's like, I've, I've played a few, I've played maybe 10 different uh, scenarios that they, like, pre-built scenarios. But usually most of my wins were all dom- uh, just through domination. Yeah, it's when you start moving past domination that you really explore Civ. It, it gets real hard to win sometimes when you're like, well, I'm getting pounded by an army. Like, random scenario, like, just generate me a random map with random people land. Sometimes you get super hosed. Yeah, I got, I, I've done mostly domination. I won a social by getting enough uh, great people. And then I also got a financial one like i just had gold out the wazoo <laughs> so there's still one there's one of four that i didn't do and I'm, I'm guessing that's the religious one probably uh or the diplomatic one where you become peaceful with everyone and yeah, yeah get elected the leader of the world that yeah. might be another option yeah that's cool so what other uh civ rev why is this in here questions um most of it like was pretty self-explanatory but it, it definitely felt like a simple version and after hearing people talk about civ and I'm like, okay, so this is easily just like the, the dumbed down version for your phone because it can't handle the idea of like, oh, you have a theocracy, and so you do you do this better. Like, it doesn't have all like it has that stuff to a certain degree, but not as, as in depth as you guys may uh, have it sound for Civ Six. Oh yeah. So, um, at the most of the stuff that I had questions for initially, like I found out like, oh, okay, that's how I stack this. That's how I do this. Uh, I love being Romans because then half price roads. That's just that's so far one of the best bets. Like, oh yeah, this road half price. Everyone yeah. moves faster. We're gonna run across the board here. Well, and and it's it's always been the case. I think, and you correct me if I'm wrong, JJ, but one of the easiest ways to win Civ, especially as a military, is to build a strong economy. So all those leaders that Absolutely. have have military abilities are actually okay at military, but you're better off picking an economic leader. And making a good economy, and then just flooding the game with units. Yeah, it's a it, it's a push and pull kind of thing. Like the the military bonuses often are really good, but if you can't afford to build any units, who cares how good your units are? You need to have enough production, you need to have enough money, and like all cities and all that stuff to pump that stuff out. And having the economic bonuses make that a lot easier. And then you can build the units afterwards with the extra money. So I hope the game's that deep at least. Yeah, there. And the, but I, I was, it's funny, like certain things, like I built a caravan. Okay, I sent it to a city. Oh, they are too poor. They didn't have any money. I'm like, what happened to my caravan? Like, oh, it's just gone now. I'm like, but I just all right. So I just lost caravan. And like, I'm like, I'm not going for for monetary wins now. <laughs> yeah, so. I really miss the ability to build roads in Civ Six. Like having the trade route things be the ones that build roads make the game kind of weird in terms of. Like how I'm going to move my units around my lands. Ken's looking at me like he has n- like the that doesn't exist in Civ Rev. You're going to have to explain that. Yeah, I'm like okay, so you you'll, okay. You choose just choose to build a road between two cities. In well, that? Nope. so in oh, in, in Civ Six, uh, there's a later game unit you can build that has the ability to build roads. Right. But early on, like when you first learn about roads, there's no way to build them except by building a trading unit and sending the trading unit to various cities. So whatever city you send it to, it'll build a road as it goes. Uh, and then that road will be there forever after that. Okay, and then you can use that to move your units through faster, so you're get, right. Get but it's going to take whatever path the trading unit feels is good. Generally, the shortest one. Okay. Uh, and sometimes you intentionally don't want to take that path because you want to like go around this body of water or move this road towards your enemy's area or like something like that. And it's ho- it becomes difficult to do that. There have been plenty of times I've built a worker. And started building a road to nowhere because I knew that I was going to build a city over there eventually. Okay. And so right. I build. I'd have two workers, one in city A and one in city B, and they were both building a road towards city C, which wasn't there yet. And that way, I wasn't building road from A to B that was going to cost me money when I was going to need a road from A to C and B to C also eventually, right? Because 
upkeep of, upkeep of that road was going to cost me money, and right. early game money is like hard. So there's no upkeep of roads in Civ Rev. They're just like <laughs> oh roads are God. roads. You just you pay amazing. You pay for them this one time, and that's it. There's no upkeep. I want to play this game. <laughs> that sounds real good, man. Wow. Well, it was, it was perfect too because like over the holidays, it was on the it was on sale on the iOS marketplace for like three bucks as opposed to ten, and I'm like done. After, yeah. And like ten dollars, like paying ten dollars for an app, like in my brain, things weird. Because like, no, they're supposed to be free or a dollar. But then I'm like, no, but it's ten dollars. I don't have to constantly pay. Every time I want to pay for a new road, like, oh, do you have gold? Like, no, I just have the game. So. Hey, what do you know? We just had that discussion, JJ. Yeah, I know, right? Mario Run. Mario Run, $10. And so, yeah, and that's when, that's when I'm like, ah, it's worth it. And then it's definitely worth it when it's $3 as opposed to 10 I'm like, yeah. Boink. Yeah, exactly. I don't care what game it is. It could be Civ Beyond Earth, $3 for any Sid Meier's game, except for maybe those Snow Patrol. What game was that I played? I talked about on this thing. Oh, Ace, Ace Patrol. Don't pay $3 for Ace Patrol. What about Sid Meier's Pirates? Ooh, Pirates might be worth three bucks. I don't think I ever actually played that game. Pirates might be worth three dollars. Um, Ace Patrol was uh, Sid Meier's, the guy that did Civ. Yeah. Uh, attempted to create a turn-based strategy biplane fighting game. Okay. So you moved like on Civ tiles, and you you dog fighted biplanes, huh. but it was made for a phone. It something makes me think of Star Wars Armada or Star Wars uh, miniatures. Like, uh, yeah, so like mini- kind of X-Wing board. miniatures, yeah. Yeah, X-Wing miniatures, yeah. yeah. Not Armada size, you know, because it's like two planes. Oh, okay, yeah. But, um, yeah, more like Star Wars X-Wing. And, and you're, yeah, think of it like that because you're, when you level up your plane, they get a new card that allows them to do more maneuvers in, in dogfights. Hmm. But I don't get the moldy crow, so why am I going to bother? I don't know. No That's, outrider yeah. either. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why you do it. Why even play? <laughs> don't, yeah. And it was it was like two dollars for the main game, and you got the Americans and the Germans, or the British and the Germans, depending on what edition you bought. But then, if you wanted to play the French, you needed to pay another dollar. And if you wanted to play the, but is know, it worth to pay money to be the French? Look, I'm just telling you the options that are available <laughs> to you. I'm just saying we don't often make value judgments, <laughs> but I'd say it's not worth three dollars to yeah. be those cheese eating surrender monkeys. Get it there out. you go. There you go. Well, uh, yeah. Wow. No, I'll keep on roads. I'd pay three dollars for that. Yeah, like I, <laughs> that would be a very different game. That's the thing is, like, I think like any questions I had were pretty cover easy the land in so, roads. Yeah, and oh, I did. I did for like ten dollars, ten gold at times. I'm just like, beep, beep, beep. I every time I could build a road, I'm like, do it. Like, I don't care if it's ten, ten. And it's because it was so simple. And I guess since definitely because I have no upkeep, that was never even a thought in my mind. Can you automate your workers in Civrev? Uh, no. Like, how, how, what's automated workers? So, like, in, in the regular Civ edition, you have your worker, okay. and he's out there building roads, or making farms. Oh, yeah, they automatically farm on their own. Okay. So, you have to, like, tell the worker to automatically do that sort of stuff if you want to. Okay. But since there's so much upkeep on everything you build, so, like, if I build a farm, yeah. I have to pay for that tile to have a farm on it forever. Oh, wow. Or if I build a mine, or what, you know, like... Whatever. Actually, I don't think if you build anything that costs uh, uh, allows natural resources, it costs. Yeah, money. I don't think a mine or a farm costs but, uh, anything. But like, uh, if you build, no, a, the farm has to be on wheat for it not to cost anything. If it's not on wheat, it costs you. Uh, I believe you're. I think you're right. Uh, yeah. but the I forgot what I was going to say. But like, if you build a sawmill to get more production, yeah, you'd pay gold for that sawmill to exist per turn. Not from what I can tell. You just pay time. <laughs> like, it takes X amount of turns for it to get built, and you're just like, nice. all right, I'm going to take my line. I would literally just build everything on every tile all the it time. Would just, it would end up meaning the game would just have a lot higher gold numbers. So instead of having, like, 500 gold and being like, I'm rich, you'd have 5,000 gold and feel that you were rich. Oh, yeah. No, you definitely have to bank a lot more than 500. Like, that's, yeah, that's definitely small potatoes for this game. I feel like with, in Civ, like, at least, like, Civ 6, if you have, like, 500 gold, you can buy, like, a pretty good tier military unit like i could buy it like a tank with that yeah nothing really is i mean again this is uh just my cursory knowledge of what i've been playing there's not a big gold cost in any of this stuff either like there's no it's just your time and like how, how many turns can you it's going to take you know depending on where you're building it too depending on like what they can produce in that section yeah it's okay like, so there's no way to outright buy units you just have to spend the production to build them over time yeah or, what whoa that's crazy right there so like in your city you got your archer, 
Mm -hmm. And you can normally build him with your production in five turns. Uh, normally, yes, okay. depending on where the city's located, because mm -hmm. right. certain cities will have won't have their proper resources. Right. So it takes like oh, ten turns, twenty turns. Right. 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 Yeah. That's standard Civ. Okay. Cool. Uh, perfect. There, in Civ PC. After a certain amount of time, you have to discover a technology. I don't remember what it is, JJ. Economy? I don't remember something either. Like there's, there's it's one. like a very basic mathematics or something. Yeah, mathematics is one you can learn in this. Um, once you discover that, you can then say, well, instead of that five turns, I'm going to pay you 60 gold and I just get the unit now. Yeah, it's oh. just like right now. Give me. The only thing that's like that is when you have a great person show up and they'll be like, hey, you, this great person's been discovered. They can either settle in this town and they'll, you know, they'll constantly produce blah, blah, blah for you. Or you can uh, settle, the, settle them immediately and you'll finish whatever's in production. So you'll automatically learn mathematics or you'll automatically learn yeah. bronze working. That's the only thing that I kind of noticed that was like, immediate. here's your choice. Like you can spend this and just get it right away. No waiting or, you know, just, just okay, well, I'll settle them when I find time. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if people have that similar effect in the PC version too. That's just the... You can do that with anything, it seems. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Well, it sounds like a cool version of the game. I'd pay three bucks for that. And here's here's how we know if it's a good game or not. You used to play the Simpsons free play game, right? Oh yeah, tapped out. Yeah. I played that. I've played I played tons of different okay. like, just yeah. Yeah. knowing you paid let's say you paid zero dollars for Simpsons tapped out. Like don't don't you don't have to admit anything. Yeah. Say you paid zero dollars to play Simpsons tapped out, you paid three dollars to play Civ. Which experience are you happy to continue doing? Civ. Okay. Civ, on, on the note, though, that the the main benefit I gained from Tapped Out was simply talking with friends and then being like, hey, look at this. Oh, yeah, I got that too. Until one friend hacked it and just filled his entire thing with donuts. Like, seriously hacked it and put in two million donuts, which is their gold or whatever. Oh, uh -huh. And then just like, he's like, look at the town I built. I'm like, well, now I'm done. You've 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 ruined it. You've reached Valhalla. <laughs> Why do I continue to build my city? My Springfield sucks. Yeah, it's just like I'm like, well, I I'm now completely disinterested. Welcome oh. to the free to play game experience. You can thank that yeah. friend for getting you more time to play your Xbox. Yeah. All right. So, what's the hot game? What what have we missed out on? We were gamers because we haven't talked about on Xbox because I haven't touched an Xbox since I sold my 360. Um, I mean, the game currently for my group is Division. That's what we're playing. Um, I don't know, do you guys know the premise of Division? A uh, Tom Clancy did it. Yeah, Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy Division. So they he's dead. A, a terrorist group decided that they want to attack New uh, America. So they essentially they sm they spread a variant of the smallpox virus on cash during Black Friday, and so it wipes out New York for the most part. Vaccinate your children. Yeah. These anti-vaxxers would have completely doomed us all. So as you as you're part of this this elite team of um, division agents, and they are like the last line of defense, and so they're, you're all activated to come in and save New York. And third person shooter um, RPG elements of like, you know choosing oh will I be a healer? Will I be more you know tankish? What like will I split the, the difference? You kind of you know figure out what you want to play as. Um, pretty straightforward shoot 'em up. There's some cool like, cool techniques and stuff you can use as far as, like, different weapons. There's a little seeker mine that you hold that's, like, about the size of, a like, a softball. And you throw that, and it'll seek out the enemy and blow up on them. And you can choose, what you know, the formats of that. And there's, like, healing stations. All, all kind of, like, basic, I feel like, first-person shooter stuff nowadays. So I've, I've got a basic knowledge of games like destiny or borderlands or halo what direction should i be heading my thoughts in um i would guess everyone a lot of people compare it to destiny that'd be the the leading thing people compare it to is destiny um so is it sort of trying to be an mmo but not an mmo yeah because that's is, what i think of destiny as yeah there is an mmo aspect to it because you can go you can normally you pay, play either you know on your own if you want to or you can play a four-person fire team and then you can take that four four person fire team, and most of the time you're playing uh, PVE, player versus environment. You just you know play the missions, but you can go to an area called the dark zone, which is essentially you know no holds barred. Other agents can attack you, and your four your four players can be attacked by other four players or whoever wants to go rogue, which is the term, and go PVP. And it it's can be fun, and str but it is also stressful, and it's like it's. For me, a lot of my gaming on Xbox is all based on community. Like, so it's like, if I can play with my friends, because we all are, you know, 
after work, we're all too tired to get together and play, you know, couch co-op like we used to. So we're like, okay, let's just sign on Xbox and let's all play this for two hours and, you know, oh, how was your day? What happened with you? You know, as we shoot bad guys in the face. Yeah, so it's it's not uh, frenetic enough that you can't chat with your friends while you're playing it? No, no, not at all. I mean, it, definitely there, there's times where it gets tough and, like, you're like, okay, wait, this guy on your left, you know, take him out. But, like, in between the different set, the different times you take out different bosses and stuff like that, you're like, oh, okay, we're heading down the street, you know, and you know, we start talking about just different stuff that happens throughout the day. Cool. So is, is Xbox still kind of alive because of the social aspect to it? I mean, it seems like they're one of the two... I mean, uh, PlayStation says they've outsold Xbox in this current Xbox One PS4 gen- generation, but I don't know that it really means much of anything anymore. It sounds like each community is just fine. Yeah. Like, I know that there's... Um, for me, the biggest benefit to Xbox is the the party system. You're able to talk with whether your friends... Like, if... if Andrew's playing Gears of War 1, I can be playing Division, and we can still chat in the party system, and just like, oh yeah, and just chit-chat back and forth, and that's the thing that's always kept me strong on the Xbox, whereas I've heard there's other options within PlayStation to do that, but I've never seen it, so it's like, it's 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 built it's it's built deeper into their programming than I know of, so it's like, that's the easiest thing, is just like, Xbox lets you talk to your friends super easy. I mean, it sounds like you have your friends, and on that system and like why would you go to the opposing system where you wouldn't have your friends yeah well i mean there, there is some good games that are over on playstation that i want to play like last of us sounds amazing and there's other games that are coming out for like that are ps4 exclusives but i'm like ah you know it's that's just, it's a costing like i don't have money to drop on another system like that so not to play one game yeah one or two games at most it's yeah. like hey kingdom hearts is gonna come out for, for xbox so i'm covered it is yeah Really, the next, the next King Hearts three should be it will be coming out for Xbox, uh, Xbox One. JJ, but what, what about means? what about Kingdom Hearts two point eight Final Chapter Prologue? Yeah, I, I don't know about that. That that and, I think is a PS four exclusive, but the the two point five is available on Xbox. <laughs> well, what's just, interesting about I'm just that? Trying to make a point of how ridiculous the names of those games are. Oh, they're no, terrible. No, I agree. It's it's, it's ridiculous. I think I've had a realization here, JJ. I, I've been in uh, a comatose panic so nobody's known about it but kingdom hearts 3 was coming to ps4 and i thought that was my only option but if it's it... coming to xbox just hear me out here okay it's coming to an xbox 2.8 2.5 and 1.5 have all included nintendo games in them okay there's a chance a chance <laughs> given that square enix is putting stuff on pc there's a chance that we could see all that show up on Steam. I would go ahead and not bet on it, but you never know. <laughs> oh, you just, 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 you just heard him. Like he it, crumbled you know, over look, in I'm, sadness. I'm sorry that I'm the voice of realism on this podcast, but Andrew, you know, you can play Persona Five on a PS3, so that's something. I don't think I can do it. After all the Persona talk you've put through this show. Not, I don't feel like I've played it, but I feel like I don't need to play it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm very little... excited for that game. I understand. <laughs> I was trying to deflate you. Have you heard about the good word of Persona? <laughs> I'm over here trying to evangelize people with this book of cards, and uh, they're like tarot cards and 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 faces. You also play Persona. <laughs> How's The Witcher going, JJ? I've been playing a lot of The Witcher also. That game's really good. I think you can play that on an Xbox too. Yeah. The only thing I've seen of The Witcher for the most part is the um Conan plays games bit on uh Conan O'Brien. Some of those are pretty funny. So this is usually pretty funny. The... He played The Witcher and it was it was typical Conan Conan hilariousness. What did he play with Peter Dinklage? Oh, I don't know. Oh, wait, no. Uh wasn't it Peter Dinklage and the woman who plays Circe? Who I'm yeah. Um, what was it? I want to say Lena Hetty. Lena Hetty. Yeah, but they were playing like a. I think they were playing a shooter. I thought no one know because Mortal Kombat was the football players. Un- unfortunately for you two, I am going to do some research while you do this because I want uh, to know my brains. Our podcast comes, is being ruined. Here comes the phone. No, you guys oh, continue man. the discussion and be like, You know okay. what you guys need to talk about is probably Marvel vs. Capcom. But while Ken over here figures out what Lena Hetty was good at playing video games on, 
Uh, I you were talking about The Witcher. Yeah, The Witcher continues to be a really fun game. I uh, finally got through the first big city, and I went to fake fantasy Ireland. <laughs> what? Well, there's a place in the game called the Skellige Isles, but it's spelled like how Irish people would spell Skellige, which is like S-K-I-E-L-L-G-E or something. For some reason, when you were saying that, I, I heard Fantasy Island. Oh, no, Fantasy Ireland. <laughs> oh, no, I heard, I, I heard Fantasy Island as well. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it is it is an island chain, so I guess that's still right. It's possible. But it's a, it's a group of islands, uh, and everyone there is kind of like a mix between Celtish and, Nor- and like, Vikings. Uh, and they're all yelling at me about how I'm not doing the things right, and then they try to fight me, and they're drunk. So, yeah, Fantasy <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> and the next island chain over is Gilligan, I- Ireland. I don't know. I haven't been there yet. That's awesome. It's pretty fun. I I really like the different uh, environments in that game and just finally, you know, getting to walk around and just like, I don't know, I'm going to stroll over here and fight a quest and then I can hit the signpost and it teleports me back to the other side of the island and then I can turn it in. I don't have to like ride my horse across the island more than once. (laughs) I feel like... He really needs fast travel. I've learned that from listening to the podcast. I yeah. super do. I super do. <laughs> you know that existed in Skyrim. I'm so confused that I you have like the this horse game. and I ran it the one time. It was good. Now just let me teleport, and then it does. I understand that existed in Sky. You, I don't understand. You hate open world gaming, but you love this game. This so game far. has a lot of good writing in it, like good oh. okay. quests and stuff, where I get to like be a fantasy detective with a sword instead of Batman. It's like, I get to play fantasy Batman with a sword. You have, like, Witcher vision, like, Batman's detective vision, and you, like, solve monster crimes to figure out where the (laughs) monsters are, and then you go murder them because they're monsters. Just like Batman, where he murders the criminals. Why did you not sell this this way the first time we talked about it? I forgot that Ken was here, and I knew I should have gone straight to Batman. He's he's got to play to the crowd, you know. Look, I I would have been much more intrigued by this game the first time you talked about it. Like it's open world, it's kind of okay, and then you're telling me about. The I hadn't quest gotten problems. to a lot of those quests yet at that but time because apparently you they're like these big monster fights, and I was scared of them. Lets you solve monster crime. Yeah, you have cat eyes instead of normal eyes. <laughs> so you're a cat man. Uh, from you're a witcher. Six. Uh, is he cat man? His name is not cat man, is it? Yeah, cat man from Secret Six. The dude with the orange costume is yeah, Catman? like the orange, almost Batman-esque costume with the three scratches. That's Catman. Oh, God. I thought he had a better name than that. No. You guys need to talk about Marvel vs. Capcom. Because <laughs> because as much as I could come up with some random stuff, I'm sure that Ken could have come up with Catman. Which, yeah, is, Ken. Not, which is not Cat- Marvel, that's by DC, the way. That's so you DC. have to wait for Injustice. I, you know what? I... I got ahead of that correction <laughs> there, sir. I got ahead of I'll that. I'll go ahead and tell you that guy's not going to be an Injustice. Yeah. Because they a... don't put obscure characters in Injustice. He's not obscure. He was on Secret Six. He's awesome. He's, he's, he, Ken, he's obscure, dude. He's, I he... barely know what Secret Six is. Did you know that he's in the Lego Batman movie? Spoilers. No, I didn't know that. Has that movie come out yet? No, it hasn't. He's, uh, he's one of the blind I packs. feel like that movie has probably like come and gone. I f- it's been so long. Yeah, I feel like the hype built up and like now it's slowly deflating since the movie's not, not out yet. I was like... I was uber excited after Comic Con. Yeah, when I saw that trailer and was like, "Give this to me now!" And then... that was a movie that I thought came out like almost immediately after so the Lego movie in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel but like it's, it's been out, out already. No, no, I, I don't believe so. I don't believe it's out yet. On a side note, uh, Lena Headey and. Uh, Peter Dinklage played Overwatch with Conan O'Brien. That's what it was. That's oh, why Pam. I watched it. You should play Overwatch, man. That game is so good. You can play Overwatch. I actually do have Overwatch. Yeah, you can. You it's do? on consoles. It's on console. I have it. The game's great. Can we cross-platform with him? You can't. Oh, God. Yeah. Because think about it, right? Like, it's not fair keyboard and mouse versus a person with a controller. They're just going to get sniped. Yeah. We we'll, yeah. get destroyed. Like, I, people... Do you like that game? It's been fun, yeah. Who's your favorite character? That's what I want to know. Uh, probably Diva. Ooh, that's a good okay. pick. Okay. Yeah. Did you like the? Did you did you play it enough to uh, recognize the shield change when it happened? No. Okay. I'd be curious if you had just to get another opinion on it. Yeah. They apparently I like released it. a new map. Oasis, yeah, yeah. I have not tried it yet. And there's a Reinhardt hook change coming. Roadhog. Right. Yeah. You know what I meant. <laughs> the Reinhardt hook. 
<laughs> it's a really funny video, actually, if you go uh, to the PTR videos for for uh, Roadhog. And they they posted a thing that said that you wouldn't be able to turn 180 degrees after you hooked somebody. So you couldn't hook them and then drop them off a mountain. <laughs> uh, there's like a six minute long video of this guy doing it to every single person he hooks. <laughs> He just the beginning and the end of the video is the the blizzard post that says you can't do this, and then he just hooks him, throws him, hooks him, throws him, hooks him, throws him. Is it that he can't turn a full 180, or like he can, he gets like 90 degrees and he's like that's enough? So so you before you could when you hooked them you could hook them and then whip 180. Okay. So you could be facing forward with your back to a wall, and you could whip 180 while the hook was out, and when it retracted. They would pull through you. Okay. I get to use my hands now, JJ, and the show way they, what I'm talking about, and then out over the wall. It might oh, make wow. more sense if you explain, like, basically the way the hook would work, it would hit you. If the hook hit you, it would place you in front of wherever Roadhog was facing when you got there. It didn't matter where he was or what he did. It would just move you to in front of him. So he turns 180 degrees and stands oh. right next to a cliff, and you fall off the cliff. Now, also, <laughs> the important part of that to note is that the hook did two tests. It saw where you were, and it saw if it hit you, and then it saw where Reinhardt, or where Roadhog was. Okay. So if it hit you, it would drag you back to him through a wall, through... Through whatever, and just drop you. Yep. Right. Okay. So... It, the hook didn't check to see if you could get to him without running through stuff. Yeah. So now they've fixed all that. They've said it's going to continuously do line of sight checks and if somehow roadhog or you runs into an obstruction you're not going to get hooked anymore it's going to break the hook and, and then, then he you should stop there yeah, or something should, yeah he shouldn't be able to drop you off cliffs anymore etc so there's there's a video of him still turning and dropping people off and then also there's a video of now line of sight gets blocked by the stupidest things so there's this there's a like a, I think it's a lucio that's like dancing behind a palm tree and reinhardt just like can't hook him <laughs> it's pretty funny nice. so that's supposedly coming after the oasis map well i'm, I'm glad you kind of like overwatch yeah i fun. dig playing that game you know every two months yeah i wanted to like a friend of mine's like oh i need to get this new skin and i'm like i but he, he is on pc so i couldn't team up with him to help him out yeah it's too bad yeah. speaking of games that we play less than every two months andrew diablo Oh yeah, I was gonna. You let in better than I did. That's what I was gonna say. Is uh, we should I've talk more. I learned something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's we'll stick with Blizz news, man. Diablo twentieth anniversary was this week. Did you ever play any Diablo, Ken? No, I had my roommate at one time. You know that game's big... on consoles too. It, it is. is. Diablo yeah. three is. My and this update a... came to it. Okay, my roommate was a big Diablo fan. He's like, oh, I can do all my gear and I do all this stuff, and I'm like. Cool, but again, at the time, it was mainly PC. Like, this is like Diablo 2, 2 era. And I'm like, okay, that's really cool. I'm going to go back to my Xbox now because that's all I got. So, Well, you can thank Diablo for the division. Yeah, I've heard that. From what I've heard, the console versions of it are pretty good these days. I have no idea. I've not played them. but uh, or Except for one time at BlizzCon, I think we played it. But uh, supposedly, it's pretty good. And they have finally brought uh, all of the versions up to the latest PC stuff, so they're getting this 20th anniversary thing. And I think they're rolling seasons out to the consoles, finally. Wow. What, two years late? Yeah, a little bit. Two, two years after the death of the game, they're going to put more stuff into it. I They're finally giving it the, like, continuing update stuff that they're giving to the PC. So it's, like, better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, that's true. And, well, I guess we missed the part of this that is actual news. So it's the 20th anniversary of Diablo. They are patching into Diablo 3, essentially a redone version of Diablo 1 in Diablo 3. So you can play Diablo 1, go back, get your characters, etc. Go through yeah. the old it, Tristram Cathedral and get some sort of black soul stone. And the movement... Spoilers. The red soul stone. Uh, and the movement is, like, restricted to only eight directions. And, like, the graphical filter looks all pixelated and stuff to make it look kind of... And there's, like, less frames of animation and stuff. It's, like, a pretty cool little system they've done. That, that's coming. And they, they're adding a bunch of stuff to Overwatch and a couple other things that um, if you do them during this 20th anniversary, you can get stuff for other games like sprays and skins and blah, blah, blah. Although, <laughs> the Heroes of the Storm one ended before everything started. Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? 
completely. But uh, the big one, I think, is the Tavern Brawl for Hearthstone, JJ. Give people a rundown on that. Yeah, so they added this uh, Dark Wanderer Tavern Brawl, I guess they're calling it. Uh, and it's essentially a player versus the computer, so there's no... You're not playing another person on their end. Uh, and it's it's a special deck, uh, and he plays mostly kind of like a warlock, uh, but he has these unique secrets, uh, and the you know you can beat the guy just fine uh, without you know just playing your Hearthstone cards and, and winning, but if you are managed to reveal all of his secrets, you're taken to the secret cow level, in which case you fight the cow king, who is another hero that starts over and summons a bunch of cows to fight you every turn. Which is a reference to the cow level from the original Diablo 2. Yeah, Diablo 2. I think there was there was a tooltip in the original Diablo that said there is no cow level, which then, of course, made people look for a cow level, even though there wasn't one. Uh, and then in the second game, they actually added one. You know how I knew about there is no cow level? No. I, <laughs> I do this not is know. The, this is the quality podcasting we do, Ken. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't play Diablo before I played StarCraft, so when I, like, halfway through StarCraft got kind of annoyed sometimes at losing missions and you start looking up cheat codes, that one of the cheat codes was there is no cow level. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it just Funny. ended the mission. <laughs> you win. Did you win? Yeah, you, yeah won. you just end it and win. <laughs> so sometimes you'd be like, uh, I get where this is going, but I've mined out the whole map. And I kind of like killed all my units without winning because I'm 12 years old and I don't know how to play this game. <laughs> so, but they look really cool though. So. I get where this is going. There is no cow level. It's really fun. Or you hit power overwhelming and all your units become invincible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I played a little bit of the Tavern Brawl. Um, it's I've a been really pretty... good way to do your quests if you need to win with classes that you're not good with. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's a yep. good idea. Oh man, you got that quest to win with Druid? Or like Hunter or something that I it really suck with these days online against other people. Play it against the Tavern Brawl. Uh, too late now, but... That would have been cool. I, that would have been a good idea. Um, I have been pretty unlucky with that Brawl because... You don't say. <laughs> what do you mean? Andrew, unlucky? How could this be? <sighs> you know why, JJ? <laughs> well, why, Andrew? He has three secrets. Yep. But he doesn't have three secrets. He has ten. Right. There's three different ones each There's, time. You get three random ones each time. And so that's a, what, a 33% chance to know kind of what he has. How well? No, not really. Okay. Yeah, not really even. Uh, how well do I do on one out of tens? I mean, probably real bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but you shouldn't build your deck to on. only reveal three of them. You should be able to reveal all of them. Toast actually built a deck um, that is a warlock deck that you can you can basically trigger any and all of them and also easily steal the portal at the end. Oh, that's cool. I haven't I was never able to get the steal of the portal to work because I just kept dying. So, uh, th like he was saying, you get to play as the mat the cow king. If you steal this one item from him at the very end yeah. before he becomes the cow king, the enemy, you become the cow king instead. Okay. And you get to play with the Cow King's deck instead of your deck. Oh, and, wow. his Which is, power and, and his hero power and all that sort of stuff. And all your emotes become Moo. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like not just Moo. It's like a really flat monotone Moo. Moo. Like it's really, really <laughs> silly sound effect. And he does it for everything. He does when he attacks. He does everything. Yeah, I like actually Every heard, sound effect he makes, Moo. I actually heard something Moo. we kind of left off of... Uh, the Diablo part too, JJ, that I think that maybe we should play through the Diablo thing just to be able to do. Yeah, I heard there's a uh, a secret pet. Yes, okay, you heard about this. This is awesome. This is super awesome. So you, you're you going back to Diablo 1. Okay. Well, there was no cow level in Diablo 1. That's true. Why was there no cow level? Well, that's weird. So they've created this backstory to tell you why the cows go crazy. And you have to fight the cows in Diablo 2. <laughs> in the version of the game that you get to do now, you get a quest to go through. I think you have to like create six different items or something like that, JJ. And spend I don't like know a, what the. Oh, are. okay. So you spend like you make create six different items. You chase down a bunch of stuff in the world, and you spend like a million gold, and then you go to this place and you get 
a new pet in the game, and it's called the Royal Calf. It's a little cow. <laughs> it's a little cow. <laughs> Turns out it's the cow king's son or daughter. And oh, that's no. why he's so PO'd so when we see him later gets, on. He goes PO'd and sends his cow armies to try and recover his child. His missing son. Yeah. This is a pretty great use of bringing this game back. Yeah, it was, when I saw that, I was like, all right, this is going to actually make me reinstall Diablo and play this. Is it really? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to do it. Okay. I think there's one other piece of like news we have to get to, and then we tweeted about it on Sunday, but AGDQ is going on right now. Yeah, it's literally going on right now, and it will still be when this podcast comes out, so people can actually listen to something, timely advice on this podcast. Timely news. You get a whole six days left. Ken is looking at me and shrugging his shoulders like, what is that? It's a I, I, I charity just... speedrunning marathon, Ken. Yeah, as soon as I, I, I broke down the acronym, the and I'm like, oh wait, game's done quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Ken... <laughs> Like I, I'm yeah. like I'm like I've heard of that. I'm like ATDQ. I'm like, and I'm like, wait, games done? Okay, never mind. I'm on board. I I have Twitch. I'm I'm good. So yeah, yeah awesome games done quick going on right now. Uh, they're supporting the Cancer Foundation. I talked a little bit about it on the internet, but it's it's our first news that happening during <laughs> instead yeah. of after. Yeah. And I think a lot of people sh- will like it if they give it a chance. I I mean, I've shown it to parents. I've shown it, and they all watch it for you know half hour twenty. 30 minutes at least and that's all it really takes you know i Take saw a, look at a youtube video that was a race between two people playing the shovel knight game oh yeah uh mm-hmm. and it apparently was we got really tense at the end so that was a really cool one uh mega man one got run as a four-way race oh that sounds rad by the only four players in the world that have beaten it in less than 19 minutes oh awesome so they're all doing all the glitches and stuff uh-huh yeah cool <laughs> <laughs> so it's always fun to do that and there's a huge schedule and you don't have to watch it all the time but go you know, check it out it's pretty cool turn your stream and sit on your phone and just put it in the background yeah some of you can do that while at work some of you not me no not most of us <laughs> <laughs> jj did you get a chance to watch the grand tour this week yes i did the Grand Tour, Ken, is a car show. We're going to talk about cars oh, now. That's right. <laughs> it's one of the best shows on TV. I don't care what. Ken this is says. the old, the Ken's walking out of the room. No, it, it's, <laughs> it's it, uh, it, I look at my phone at this point. Like, okay, it's about 10 minutes left. They're going to talk about Top Gear for a little while and then maybe fantasy football. I'm like, okay, Marcus played. <laughs> <laughs> you guys still get the download. I still listen to it. But as soon as you start to hit. This is why we do stuff. it at the end. <laughs> no, this is exactly why we do and it. And that's why I'm like, cool, Marcus played. Good to hear from you guys. <laughs> and uh, and fantasy football's over, so there's no more of that. No, yeah, yeah no more fantasy football. Wait. And soon no more Top Gear. I actually looked it up, JJ. They have, I think, um, five, four or five more episodes left, including oh, this past one. So sad. Yeah, it's I think it's 12 episodes, and I think this was nine, so I think it's three more. Wait, so why no more fantasy football? Because it's over. Football season's ending. Okay. They're in the playoffs right now, but... Um, okay, so fantasy football only goes up to the playoffs. It goes up to the week before the playoffs, unless you have a really, really terrible commissioner. Okay. Because Correct. most of the players are done playing. So okay. you, you would just start auto-losing your games. Okay. I honestly didn't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so since fantasy football's over, my team's out of the playoffs. JJ's team never had a chance at the playoffs. Really, only the Packers are kind of interesting to one of us. Football's over. We're done. Football's over. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The Super Bowl could be pretty bad this year. But back on stuff that's good. Look, Grand Tour was awesome this week. And even if you don't care about cars, they had tanks. (laughs) Not only did they have tanks, they had battleships. And and rocket guided ballistic bullets. It was pretty cool. Okay, so (laughs) Ken, you'll get a kick out of this. So they decided that preppers okay were like the, the most doomsday ridiculous prepper, the doomsday no, preppers. I, I know i i like i've seen shows it's okay fun. but like build like cars for the inevitable apocalypse preppers were the most ridiculous thing they've ever seen so hammond of course thought it was the coolest thing he'd ever seen <laughs> and decided he wanted to build his bug out vehicle okay so he builds like a winnebago like completely <laughs> armored on the sides like bulletproof for a pellet gun 
you know, and he says it's the best thing he's ever been in. He's got like a chicken inside of it. <laughs> he's got like a filtration system to filter his urine out into like drinkable water again. Oh, it's like really silly. Drinkable in quotations. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he, he has like a weapons rack, but he has to get out of the car, walk all the way around to the back. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know, it's funny. <laughs> and so he, he builds this thing. And they're like, this is the, they go out and look at it, and this is the stupidest thing ever. And he's like, no, it's bulletproof. He shoots a pellet gun at it, so they go get, like, a machine gun and a rocket launcher oh, and God. blow it up. So he says, okay, well, I'll just build a better one. So, what does he build next, JJ? He builds, like, a six, uh... Oh, yes. The like amphibious six vehicle. Wheel amphibious vehicle with, like, two inches of armor plating and, like, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, like, some kind of clear, like, military vehicle that he's retrofitted or something. I'm having visions of the vehicle from the end of Tango and Cash. Oh, a little if, bit. If you guys, I mean, I, I don't know if, if I'm too old or if the listeners are old enough to know Tango and Cash. Yeah. But they had this great yeah. SUV that was like, who holds a, who holds a pink slip? Satan? It was, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was, this is like an APC. Yeah. It okay. looked like um, if you took like a, yeah, like an armored carrier. and APC just, from Aliens. Uh, the oh, AP. Cool. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Just remember that you said that. Okay. Okay. So this looks like if you took a modern APC and okay. you loaded it down with two inches more of armor plating <laughs> and then stuck your chicken and your urine filtration <laughs> system in it. I like that he's like, no, no, I still need a chicken. Oh, yeah. I, I want a rotisserie He has back to have there. food, yeah. No, no, but like, I'm, like in my Eggs head, he has a small food. rotisserie just going. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, a, it's an egg. He's, it's laying Oh, eggs. he's got a, a live chicken. a live chicken. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Laying that's how he, got, that's how he plans to survive on eating only <laughs> he, eggs. He plans on one eating chicken. eggs <laughs> and chicken soup the rest of his life. Uh, egg drop soup's not bad. Yeah. But, uh, okay. So then uh, they get a tank and a spotter vehicle for the tank and blow that one up. <laughs> oh, God. So then he builds a third one. JJ, what is it modeled after? The troop carrier from Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to do it, do it with some style, okay? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm on board for that one. And he paints it matte black and everything else. It and looks like a computer computerized. <laughs> he's, got, he's got, like, radar, sonar for miles, all that sort <laughs> of stuff. So he's like, there's no way. He said it's He's like it's impervious to tanks. It's, it's yeah, like he builds it with ceramic armor plating that is impervious to a tank shell. Good God! So they get a navy ship <laughs> and they hit it with like a hundred and thirty-five millimeter cannon, <laughs> and they shoot it from offshore. And <laughs> blow it up. Was but wait, also I just realized in this entire discourse, are they killing chickens each time they do this? I would assume. Not. I assume so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a 50 50 chance it's a 50 50 chance. chance i don't know but i think they accidentally killed that gerbil and they didn't tell anyone schrodinger's couple, chicken yeah, yeah for a couple episodes they had uh they were supposed to build um uh sustainably sourced vehicles okay. so you, you like took your land rover and then you built it from the environment oh oh yeah i actually think i saw something like that like yeah. a commercial for that yeah he, they made one out of meat they made one out of, I heard of that. Yes. Uh, yeah. hedges, and they made one out of, like, Also, mud. the hedge one was parked against a hedge, and, like, a gerbil moved into it. <laughs> and then the hedge one got attacked by a hedge clipper at one point. I'm like, I really hope they took the gerbil out of that thing before they did. But they never mentioned again, so yeah. like, they probably didn't. Yeah, I'm sure it's just like the chicken, but it was, yeah. see, this is why we talk about the Grand Tour sometimes. I, I, I am actually happy to have uh, partaken of that one. It's probably the only one that's ever been interesting to Ken because it involved aliens. That's there's, all. That, there's that other one where they shoot a bunch of guns and it's like the day after tomorrow or whatever that movie is with Tom Cruise. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, they had an Edge there of Tomorrow go. episode. Day after tomorrow is where uh, Jake Gyllenhaal has to hide in the library. From wolves yeah. on a on a ice ship yeah, in that's the not of New York. It's not like that. Where we have to move to Mexico because they're the ones with a viable climate. Too bad they built a wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we paid for, after all. Oh, <laughs> oh man. On that note. Topical. Oh, man. I think that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks, Ken, for coming out and giving us a little bit of insight into Civ and your Xbox. And, yeah. Because I, I, I had heard so many things about The Division, and I never really 
grasp what it was about. So thanks yeah. for giving me. I mean, that it's one. A, uh, I mean, it's another RPG type game like that. And it's you get the gist of it pretty quickly. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Awesome of you to drop by, Ken. Thanks. Next time I have to come by, and I need uh, pointers on um, street passes because I just Ooh. I'm borrowing a friend's uh, 3ds, and I know Andy's the master of th- street pass. After you are in the correct place. Yeah. Yeah. We should do that. We should do a a Nintendo 3ds centric episode where it's like all the th- games you should play or something, and we can do some street pass stuff too. Would that require me to use my Nintendo 3ds? I mean, you own it. You could plug it in once in a while. Okay. I'd also be interested in coming back and do a board games episode because oh I love board games. Me too, man. I want to play board games so bad. There's never enough time. There really isn't. There's never enough time. I guess that's why we were gamers. See? See? There you oh, go. Oh, we should have just ended the episode right there. Oh, we didn't so do good. all the stupid ads we have to do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, screw it. <laughs> JJ, where can people uh, tell us how awesome Ken is and they should come off the show more? Uh, they can tell us that on facebook.com slash we were gamers, or they can email it to podcast at we were gamers.com. They can go on Twitter and find us at we were gamers or follow our Instagram, which is also we were gamers. Did I forget any? I don't really care if you did. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> it's, it's all good. the same. Yeah, I don't even right. know why people bother listing them all anymore. Just find us at we were gamers. Yeah. That's true. You should do that. We did the thing you're supposed to do. Wow. Now that this ending has kind of died. (laughs) Let's get out of here.